This evening, the Ministry of Natural Resources is cracking down on unethical rent-a-citizen practices in Guyana's petroleum industry. Stay tuned for details on how these efforts will ensure meaningful benefits for Guyanese citizens in a major bus. Police arrested a 37-year-old resident of Kitty after finding a significant cache of firearm, ammunition, and narcotics in his apartment. We'll have more on this breaking story. Then, a tragic accident in Linden has claimed the life of a 17-year-old motorcyclist. Stay with us for more on this ongoing investigation. Also, several incoming flights were diverted from landing at the Chedi Jagan International Airport last evening following a lightning strike that damaged the runway lighting system. We'll provide updates on the repair process and the impact of severe weather in the area. And finally, in international news, Kim Yoo-jong, the sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, has issued a stern warning, describing rising tensions with South Korea as a prelude to a very dangerous situation. This comes after South Korea installed loudspeakers along the border in response to North Korea's provocative action. We'll have the latest on this developing situation and more coming up on tonight's broadcast. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for June 10, 2024. I'm Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, the Ministry of Natural Resources, through the Local Content Secretariat, has intensified its efforts to crack down and prevent renter citizens or fronting practices in Ghana's petroleum industry. These unethical practices involve foreign companies using local individuals or entities merely as fronts to meet local content requirements, while the foreign entity retains actual control and benefits. This action undermines the Local Content Act's goal of ensuring that Guyanese citizens benefit meaningfully from the natural resources sector. To combat this, the government of Guyana is enhancing collaboration with the Ghana Revenue Authority to identify and penalize those engaging in fronting. This joint effort aims to ensure adherence to the legal and ethical standards set by the Local Content Act. The Ministry is committed to maintaining a transparent and equitable petroleum industry that benefits all Guyanese and urge everyone to support these efforts to uphold the integrity of the local content framework. In other news, several incoming flights were diverted from landing at the Chedi Jagan International Airport last evening following a lightning strike that damaged the runway lighting system at CJIA. The airport and the Ghana power and light repair teams are actively addressing the issue. The identified damages include four cable sections and five transformers, and efforts are underway to rectify the situation. Intense rainfall and lightning in the Tamiri area damaged transformers belonging to both GPL and CJIA, rendering the airport's runway lighting inoperable. Both primary and alternative circuits were affected despite the presence of two independent circuits. As a safety measure, all incoming flights were diverted last evening. However, those flights were able to land at CJIA today. Severe thunderstorms and lightning also affected the lighting protection system of the damaged equipment and multiple GPL transformers in the nearby communities. CJIA is diligently working to restore the runway lighting system, reaffirming its commitment to ensuring safe operations as quickly as possible. On a different note, police arrested Edino Lewis, a 37-year-old resident of the Silver Street Kitty Georgetown, after discovering a cache of firearm, ammunition, and narcotics at his apartment. The police, acting on a tip-off, conducted a search of the premises at approximately 12.30 hours on Saturday. The search yielded one AK-47 rifle and one AK-47 magazine, one Glock 26 pistol and three Glock magazines, over 1,000 rounds of ammunition, three AR-15 magazines, a gun silencer, a scale used for weighing narcotics, a quantity of ecstasy, over 100 grams of cocaine, and over 500 grams of cannabis. Lewis was informed of the offences, arrested and cautioned. The Criminal Investigation Department processed the seized items. Lewis remains in custody as investigations continues. Stick around when we return. Government vows crackdown on security firms over NIS contributions. And 17-year-old motorcyclist dies in a millions ward accident.
experience more than award-winning speed. Way more. Get the best that LTE has to offer on Digicel, officially the fastest mobile network in Guyana. Ookla, the company behind Speedtest, recognizes Digicel as the best mobile network in Guyana. With the best LTE experience and the fastest data speeds, experience it all with Digicel, the award-winning network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good girl, forget things. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He <laughs> is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all we these will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose. Season. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppers, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document platinum flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppers, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket and she proper buy up not enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppers <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies. We put the pep back into your kitchen. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture offered at amazing prices will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinveld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. The Father's Day cultural extravaganza is here again. Yes, it's dedication to Daddy Five, a father's dream too. Featuring Marissa Morgan Bonney, Romel Edmondson, Keisha Sam, Delisha Wright, Simone Dowding, Jolian Harry, Colin Ambrose, Moza Telford, Frederick Minty, Antoine De Silva, Ryan Headley, Creative Arts Dance Troupe, and others. On Sunday, June 16, from 8 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. Tickets are $2,500. Directed by Sharon Cadogan Taylor. Sneak me with the gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Copy smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern optical services. 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. Welcome back. The government has announced stringent actions against security firms that withhold insurance contributions from their employees without forwarding these payments to the National Insurance Scheme. Vice President Dr. Barry Jaglio addressed this issue during a recent press briefing, highlighting it as a significant concern raised during his outreach at the Artichon Convention Center. Dr. Jaglio revealed that a comprehensive inspection of all security companies contracted by the government has been initiated with a report expected within two weeks. He cautioned that companies found guilty of such practices risk losing their contracts. Emphasizing the importance of timely payments and proper deductions for NIS, Jaglio stressed that security companies must ensure that their employees receive their dues promptly, including contributions to NIS for injury benefits. He said the government has prioritized addressing outstanding matters concerning the National Insurance Scheme and other issues affecting citizens' livelihood. The Vice President's public engagement event saw 1,000 individuals turn out, allowing them to voice their concerns directly to government ministers and technical experts. In tragic news, 
Police are investigating a fatal accident that occurred around 14 hours on Saturday at the intersection of Amelia's Ward Public Road and Tukon Drive in London, resulting in the death of 17-year-old motorcyclist Stephen Burnett. The accident involved motor car PAC 9289, driven by a 31-year-old female from Amelia's Ward, and motorcycle CM 971, driven by Burnett of Central Amelia's Ward, Linden. According to reports, the car was traveling west on the southern drive lane of Amelia's Ward Public Road. As the driver signaled a right turn into Tukon Drive, the motorcyclist, not wearing a safety helmet, overtook a line of traffic at high speed and collided with the car's front right door and windshield. Burnett fell onto the road, sustaining severe injuries. Both Burnett and the driver, who is pregnant, were rushed to the Linden Hospital complex. Burnett was pronounced dead on arrival while the driver was treated for neck and body injuries and admitted to the hospital. Further investigations are ongoing. Don't go away after the break. China and Pakistan to upgrade the $62 billion economic quarter despite security challenges and protests against nuclear power plants in the coastal region of Kenya. <sighs> Not a single bar of service. Not with us. Digicel officially has the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Ookla, the company behind Speed Test, recognizes Digicel as the network with the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Be it in Aishalton or in Etteringbang, we got you covered. Digicel, the award-winning network for everyone, everywhere. Hello, my fellow TikToker followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and poise cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, casserole, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you who know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document planting flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boiling high, we serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Ready to go to the supermarket, and she'll pop up by not enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. The Father's Day cultural extravaganza is here again. Yes, it's dedication to Daddy Five, a father's dream too. Featuring Marissa Morgan Bonney, Romel Edmondson, Keisha Sam, Delisha Wright, Simone Dowding, Dolian Harry, Colin Ambrose, Moe Telford, Frederick Minty, Antoine De Silva, Ryan Headley, Creative Arts Dance Troupe, and others. On Sunday, June 16 from 8 p.m. at the National Cultural Center. Tickets are $2,500. Directed by Sharon Cadogan Taylor. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Sneak away with a gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Modern optical faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Yeah. Oh, yes, Modern optical services. 316 Main Street, Georgetown. Telephone 226-1082. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisun's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. 
Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Haiti's newly selected Prime Minister, Gary Connell, was hospitalized last Saturday in Port-au-Prince just days after arriving in the country. The government stated that Connell felt unwell following a week of intense activity, but he is in a stable condition. Connell, who is asthmatic, reportedly experienced breathing difficulties. High-ranking officials, including Haiti's National Police Director and UNICEF's representative, visited the hospital. Connell, chosen as Prime Minister on May 28, faces significant challenges, including addressing gang violence and preparing for the UN-backed deployment of a Kenyan police force. Connell recently returned to Haiti after serving as UNICEF's Regional Director for Latin America and the Caribbean. Internationally, violence erupted in a coastal village in Kenya amid controversy surrounding the government's proposal to construct the nation's inaugural nuclear power station. Local residents and activists argue that the project poses a threat to livelihood and risk harming a globally renowned marine reserve. Al Jazeera's Malcolm Webb reports. It wasn't a normal day in the coastal village of Oyombo when these people say police broke their arms with batons. It was just over two weeks ago. Workers from Kenya's nuclear power agency came to put a weather monitoring mast in the village school. The government says it wants to build a nuclear power plant around here. Residents don't want it. They say district officials have been paid off while they've been ignored. Police say they had to use gunfire and tear gas to break up a riot. It will kill people. If you look at pictures of where such projects happened before, pregnant women have given birth to children with one leg or with no eyes. That's why I don't support this project. The communities beside the mouth of a creek flowing into the Indian Ocean. Most people here survive by farming coconuts or fishing. The mangrove forests along the sides of the creek are crucial for fish reproduction. Further down the channel, turtles lay eggs on the beaches and the coral reef out to sea is also crucial for fish reproduction. Where we are right now is a protected marine wildlife reserve and the area being considered for the power plant is here. Scientists say the warm water emitted by a nuclear power station would be disastrous for the sea life anywhere in this area and for the tourists who come to see it. Yeah. Environmental activist Phyllis Amido says the location couldn't be worse and Kenya's nowhere near being able to manage nuclear waste. She's won international awards for her campaigns. Her sights are now set on the nuclear plant, for which the government says it wants to borrow around $4 billion, or about 500 billion Kenya shillings. Part of it is because they are entrenched in corruption. They are just looking at 500 billion, the amount of, of, of contracts they will get and kickbacks and all that, you know. They are trying to push this thing down the throat of Kenyans because of 500 billion. But not because Kenyans will benefit from it, but a few men within government will benefit from it. The International Atomic Energy Agency says Kenya's on track to have a research reactor by the 2030s by which time the government says it wants the coastal power plant to be fully operational here. Several African governments have signed deals for nuclear power stations in recent years, mostly with Russia and China. McDonald Kenga, who took us fishing near the proposed site, doesn't want Kenya to be one of them. He says radiation poisoning will destroy his livelihood. The Nuclear Energy Agency told us the final decision on the site will meet all Kenyan and international laws and it's seeking a foreign partner who will deal with nuclear waste. If we do studies and determine that it's the right place, I can also look at you in the eye and tell you that as a government organization that is responsible for doing this, we will do it in a way that will not affect the environment adversely or be pose any danger to our people. The government says the power station will bring development to the community around it. But nobody's yet found a permanent solution to dispose of nuclear waste, which remains dangerous to all life forms for tens of thousands of years. The residents of Oyombo we spoke to say they don't want to change their way of life and they don't want that problem here. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Khalifi County, Kenya. 
Meanwhile, the sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has warned that tensions with South Korea are a prelude to a very dangerous situation. South Korea installed loudspeakers along the border, broadcasting propaganda critical of Pyongyang. That's after the North sent thousands of balloons carrying manure and rubbish to the South. Al Jazeera's Katrina Yo reports. South Korea's military has resumed loudspeaker broadcasts directed at its neighbor in the North. The broadcasts are being used as psychological warfare and blare propaganda critical of Pyongyang across the heavily militarized border. They include news and catchy South Korean pop songs. This is the latest tit-for-tat move as tensions rise between the two rivals. We want to make it clear that North Korea will be responsible of any tensions escalated between the South and North. Our government will maintain a firm and thorough readiness against any provocation from the North. That's prompted an angry warning from Kim Yo-jong, the powerful sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. She's called the move a prelude to a dangerous situation and says unless Seoul stops the broadcasts, the South Korean people will undoubtedly witness a new counteraction. Free North Korea! According to Pyongyang, the latest escalation started when South Korean activists and defectors from the North sent balloons carrying messages criticizing Kim's family and regime, dollar bills, and USB sticks containing South Korean music and television shows. The North retaliated by sending hundreds of balloons carrying waste paper, cigarette butts, and animal manure across the border. You know, part of the reason, in my estimation, why the Kim regime uh, has sent these uh, uh, trash-filled detritus, of, you know, potentially feces-filled balloons uh, into South Korea, uh, you know, is to put uh, President Yoon and South Korea in a difficult position. Seoul described the move as an attempt to cause disruption and anxiety and suspended a 2018 military pact between the two countries that had halted military exercises and propaganda campaigns. The neighbors remained technically at war after their conflict in the early 1950s ended in an armistice but no peace treaty. At maximum output, sound from the South Korean loudspeakers can reach more than 20 kilometers into the north, far enough to potentially demoralize soldiers and civilians who hear them. It seems the latest spat is not about to end, as North Korean forces are reported to be setting up their own loudspeakers in response. Katrina Yu, Al Jazeera. Finally, Xi Jinping called China and Pakistan good neighbors good friends and good partners during his meeting with Prime Minister Shiba Sharif. She pledged support for Pakistan's social and economic development as the country grapples with a debt crisis, high inflation and poverty. Al Jazeera's Katrin Yu reports. Good neighbors, good friends, and good partners. That's how Chinese President Xi Jinping described the deepening partnership between China and Pakistan when meeting Prime Minister Shibaz Sharif on Friday. Xi has pledged to help Pakistan with its social and economic development. Sharif's visit, his first since beginning his second term in office in March, comes as Pakistan's economy is experiencing a debt crisis, high inflation and widespread poverty. Speaking at a business forum, the Pakistani leader praised China's rapid development and said his country should learn from its progress. China is conserving its resources by not purchasing limousines and expensive cars but investing in its youth, in education, in health. Beijing and Islamabad agreed to upgrade the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPEC. The $62 billion infrastructure initiative was launched in 2015 and hailed as a game-changer for Pakistan's economy. But progress has stalled on sites which have been plagued by security problems. In March, five Chinese workers and their driver were killed in a suicide bombing on their way to a hydropower dam project. Dozens have been killed in similar attacks by armed groups since 2018. Chinese officials have called on Islamabad to step up efforts to ensure the security of China's nationals in Pakistan. But some say Beijing should also contribute to improving safety at CPEC sites. There should be a concerted, cooperative strategy which should comprehensively, jointly tackle the scourge of terrorism because this is a common threat 
and terrorism has no borders. Pakistan is strategically important for Beijing. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor links China's western Xinjiang province to the Arabian Sea and the Middle East. Because of this, China has become a major lender for Pakistan's cash-strapped economy, with Islamabad owing Beijing about 13% of its total foreign debt. Sharif also visited the southern tech hub of Shenzhen and will end his five-day trip in the northwestern city of Xi'an. 31 memorandums of understanding were signed between the two sides, covering areas including technology, energy, agriculture and trade. Katrini, Al Jazeera, Beijing. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the further weather forecast. And that's it to be two headline news for this Monday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6 30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other. <laughs>